Columbian College is offering a new interdepartmental major for the next academic year. Students will soon be able to earn a bachelor's degree in either neuroscience or cognitive neuroscience. We sent G Week reporters James Pidusis and Parker Jensen to find out what this new major entails and what it means for the university. GW is unveiling a new cognitive neuroscience program starting fall of 2018. We sat down with Professor Kravitz, one of the assistant professors of the new cognitive neuroscience program, to talk about the establishment of the new major, the future of the field, and what this means for GW. Um, cognitive neuroscience is really a discipline that tries to associate human behavior with underlying physiology, generally, um, with some animal behavior as well. And what we do is we see some sort of some organism engaging in a complex behavior. As tightly as possible, we take measurements of the physiology and how it changes while that behavior is occurring, and then we try to associate the two together. I think it's, it's, it's very important. Um, at the level of sort of undergraduate education and at the level of the, the sort of direction that the academic profession is going. So this is one of the sort of most rapidly growing fields in the academic side. Um, a huge number of researchers are interested in it. A number of really important developments are starting to be made. Um, and I think it broadens also the, the general neuroscience community in the area, which is really great. So we had, um, received a call from the administration last year around this time uh, saying that they were interested in doing something like this because a bunch of undergraduates um, were creating their own self-initiated majors that were very much like neuroscience. Uh, and they asked if we wanted to put together a formal program and um, I designed sort of the first version and then uh, my co-director Damien O'Halloran came on and we refined it down with all the other faculty and we got to this. So the interesting thing about the major was we really designed it using um, pretty much existing courses. There are a couple of courses that um, have been developed for it, but most of the courses were already offered. So we have a number of, not just cognitive neuroscientists, but clinicians, um, so applied social, social program specialists as well, and we're always looking to make that bigger, and there's a fair amount of interest on campus in that sort of regardless. I think that it's always good when you're sort of meeting student demands. So in terms of the popularity of the undergraduates, I would assume that this will help. Um, it's a major that was largely created to meet that demand, and so it should um, help students to organize their sort of undergraduate experience a little bit better. From G-Week, I'm James Pidusis. Thanks, James and Parker. When we come back, we talk to the GW senior who helped make the new neuroscience program a reality. G-Week's Rudy Venkatesen sits down with Jamie Kleiner next. Stay with us. Raise high. This isn't just our battle cry. It's our call, our challenge. Because when you were called to Washington, you were called to higher expectations, to a higher standard. We are called here to advance knowledge, to serve society, to change the world. This is the George Washington University, and what we make is history. So stand up, be bold, take risks, press on, push harder, raise high. Welcome back, I'm Vruti Vangatesan, and here with us now is senior Jamie Kleiner, who played an instrumental role in developing the new neuroscience program here at the George Washington University. Jamie, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So, the viewers don't know, we talked a little bit earlier, and you told me that coming to GW as a freshman, you wanted to be a political science and a cognitive science major. However, four years later, you're a poli-sci and a psychology major, yet you spent the past four years of your education trying to push for this neuroscience program. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so I came into GW. Initially, my focus was in political science, mm -hmm. um, but I was very interested in pursuing cognitive neuroscience. Um, as a freshman, I had heard about the interdisciplinary major that GW offers students. So it's called a SIM for short, a mm -hmm. special interdisciplinary major. Um, and a lot of kids don't know they that this is the interdisciplinary major is hard. It's yes. not something easy that students can do. Yeah, it, it requires proposing the major, so you have to be accepted into it first. Mm -hmm. um, and it also requires putting together a team of professors and staff that really support you and back you for your college career. Um, you have to create your own curriculum um, and really all the necessities that go into having a, a major at an institution is really on your plate. Mm -hmm. So um, I was interested in pursuing that for cognitive neuroscience, um, but when 
I had found out about you know the difficult steps uh, that it took to create the cognitive neuroscience major, I questioned whether I was able to do that and also pursue political science. Um, and at that time, I also had found out that you cannot double major when creating a, a major at GW. Oh. Um, one of the reasons they have that uh, rule in place is mm -hmm. because this program to create a major is really meant for um, disciplines that most universities would not have that are very uncommon um, and specific to the person. Um, so I felt that that didn't really fit the bill for creating a cognitive neuroscience major because mm -hmm. it is such um, a progressive field and it is advancing so much um, and is common. Um, you said that kids here at GW, if they were given the option to create this interdisciplinary major, a lot of them pursued actually creating the neuroscience major, didn't they? Yes, yes. So in the process around my freshman year in, mm -hmm. in working to create a neuroscience major, I actually found out that uh, neuroscience was the most popular proposed sim at GW. So that really demonstrated, you know, that there is a population at GW that, you know, are passionate about neuroscience mm -hmm. and want to pursue that field of study and that there is definitely a lack of the major in the institution. So you talked earlier about how um, meeting with Peter Kay and President, former President Knapp um, actually garnered you a lot of attention, garnered this upcoming major a lot of attention. Yes. Um, so in my sophomore year, as I was really getting into the nitty gritty of pursuing um, both trying to create the independent major, but also advocating for you know, not having to create a special sim major for mm -hmm. cognitive neuroscience and trying to advocate for actually having this be a major that is accessible and available to all students that want to pursue it. Mm -hmm. um, I did meet with President Knapp and Peter Kay, which is very exciting. Um, I initially met during their office hours that they uh, leave available to students and mm -hmm. then they invited me back to speak further. Um, President Knapp was actually surprised and was unaware that we had this lack of a major and, and such a population of students mm -hmm. that wanted to pursue it. So um, I think it really was a matter of getting the attention of the administration to make them aware of you know this lack of a major and the passion that a lot of students have for this field um, for us to really hit the ground running with this project. But you said earlier that creating this major, it wasn't it wasn't without blockades, it wasn't without barriers. Mm -hmm. um, you said that GW had all the resources and they had all, I guess, the necessities, um, but they, they weren't able to create it as fast as you'd hoped. So the thing about neuroscience um, is that it is, it is a very difficult field mm -hmm. um, in terms of organizing how you know to get it on a college campus. Um, the reason for that is because it is so interdisciplinary. Mm -hmm. um, you can go so many avenues in mm -hmm. neuroscience. You could go cognitive neuroscience, you could study evolutionary neuroscience, anthropology, uh, philosophy, psychology, biology, all these different um, aspects of neuroscience mm -hmm. makes it very difficult to figure out where to house the program. So I think that was the biggest challenge in trying to create the program in mm -hmm. figuring out logistics because GW did have the professors already here, the mm -hmm. students wanting to and already studying it, um, and the courses. But the courses were spread out between four to five different departments. So it was really a matter of kind of reining it all in. And so you had actually mentioned earlier as well that you where your part really played was creating the curriculum. And that, that's so interesting to me that a GW student, a graduating GW student who's not even going to major in it, was so instrumental in picking the courses that were required to actually major in this. Yeah, so I think, you know, where I um, really, you know, benefited the program in, you know, helping figure out what classes to, to put into the curriculum was that although I am not graduating with the title on mm -hmm. my degree of, of neuroscience, um, you know, as I said earlier, the classes are here at GW, mm -hmm. and I have been taking them for four years along with many students just like me. Um, so it really was a matter of kind of using me as the guinea pig in, <laughs> in figuring out what classes worked, what classes didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and I did have that insight between departments to kind of meld the professors together that were working on this because we had professors working from psychology, from biology, from anthropology, philosophy, 
and you know those cor those professors can really only speak about the courses in in their department, whereas students like myself you had that had the insight hand. in between departments. Mm -hmm. So, so you had mentioned earlier that as a female who is in STEM, that your abilities were questioned throughout this process. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so. I think unfortunately we're still in a place in history where it is a bit taboo to have women in, in STEM and in science and technology and especially to be leaders in the field. Um, you know, I would be lying if I didn't say that there were points in my career in college where I questioned my ability, I questioned whether I would be taken seriously in my mm -hmm. work and my research. Um, and you know, that's unfortunate. but. I, I, if there's one thing that I want students to take away from this process is that I want this um, project to be a token of uh, a, a example when a, a woman in STEM not only was able to, to come to the table, but also able to be a leader and advocate both for myself but for other students and students that'll come after me. So what exactly do you think will be the greater impact of having this kind of major um, or this program um, at GW? So I definitely think that there is a trend taking place in GW, not necessarily you know, away from our historical roots of being you know, centered in humanities and political science. GW will always be the center of political science and mm -hmm. we're very proud of that. Um, but I do think we are also seeing a shift to be more inclusive of fields like science and technology, like mm -hmm. neuroscience, and I think our horizons are broadening. So I think that this is a, another push forward to taking in more students that are going to be pursuing the, the science fields in GW. That's great. So I have just one last personal question for you then. How does it feel knowing that thousands of students in, in the next couple decades will be graduating with a major that you really did almost single-handedly create. <laughs> um, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's really exciting. Um, you know, this has been something that I really have poured a lot of passion into throughout my four years at GW, and um, I can only hope that, you know, we, we groom and train the next leaders in the field, and I'm just excited to see where this program goes, and I know that it's only the beginning. Well, Jamie, thank you so, so much for being with us here today. There's more G-Week after the break. Stay with us.